Next on Worcester News Tonight, we have the latest details on a gruesome discovery in Worcester, a burned body found inside a car at Hope Cemetery. Plus, how a Worcester police substation at Union Station will benefit the entire area. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. We begin this evening with developing news out of Worcester, where a dead body was found in a burning car. Police received the call early Tuesday morning and were on scene for several hours. Tonight, Worcester police held a press conference as a full investigation is now underway. Our Cam Jandro now joins us live with those details. Cam? Yeah, and we don't know very much at this time, but we do know that a body was indeed pulled out of a burning car, and Worcester police has declared this death as suspicious. Part of Worcester's Hope Cemetery closed Tuesday. Police are investigating a body found in a burned out car. Our officers responded along with the fire department and discovered a sedan uh, engulfed in flames. Firefighters took a few minutes to put out the flames, and once they were out, our officers and the firefighters observed that there was what appeared to be a human body in the car. Worcester police says they received the call around 8.30 in the morning, and tonight there is very little information regarding the body. The deceased has not been identified. Uh, Detective Bureau and the crime scene unit were called to process the scene and to investigate. Investigation is ongoing. Investigation is in its very early stages now. Part of the cemetery was blocked, and one man who visits the area often says he can't believe something like this would happen. That's yeah, shocking. It's kind of chilling, you know. You don't expect to come across something like that, you know. People get into whatever situation and they just panic and try to cover up the evidence with uh, setting a car fire. But, you know, today, I think with the uh, way the forensics are and stuff, I can't imagine uh, whoever did this will get away with it. Now, like Lieutenant Murtha said, the investigation is still in its very early phases, but anyone with any information is urged to contact the Worcester Police Department. Anna? Thanks for that report, Cam. Well, starting next month, you may notice a larger police presence at Worcester's Union Station. A police substation is expected to be established there by January. It will provide around-the-clock security for the transportation hub and serve as a base of operations for downtown patrols. The city, WRA, and police department have been working together to place a more permanent presence at Union Station to deal with safety and security issues there. Vincent Padoni, chairman of Worcester Redevelopment Authority, says the perception of having police officers in and around the station will go a long way. This is there will now be a substation in the downtown area. So this substation is not only going to be for Union Station, but it's going to be a, a point uh, to be able to deploy um, into the downtown area where the new um, uh, condos are, are going um, and all the work that's being done downtown. This will be the hub for that for that uh, for that sub for those police officers. 16 opiate overdoses were reported at Union Station over the 12 months between September 1, 2016 and August 31, 2017. It's the first night of Hanukkah, and to celebrate, a small group gathered in Worcester Mayor Joseph Petty's office at City Hall. Stephen Schimmel, the executive director of the Jewish Federation of Central Massachusetts, lit the menorah. He says it's great to have the support of the city in celebrating the holiday. Schimmel says Hanukkah, which is celebrated over the course of eight days, has symbolism in several different ways. There are universal um, messages that uh, we all can relate to, whether we're Jewish or not, but particularly for the Jewish people, a group of people who faced persecution through the years. Hanukkah is a celebration of freedom and triumph of um, our culture and heritage in the face of oppression for so many thousands of years and so many times. The annual lighting of the menorah at Newton Square will take place tomorrow night at 4 p.m. Worcester has already had success in addressing chronic homelessness, but now the issue appears to be back. And the city administration is looking to step up their efforts. Our Brittany Schaefer has more on the perspective from individuals who have been homeless. Army veteran Stephen Neal Scully lives at the Veterans Inc. shelter in Worcester. He's been here for a while, but says things are looking up for him. I have been here since July of 2014. As of now, I've already found housing. And um, during my stay here, um, I was very, very happy about the way things operated here. Scully is taking advantage of Veterans Inc. housing, clothing, food and employment services. 
I can't say where I'd be today without the services of Vets Inc. Veterans Inc. is just one of many spots in the city where people can find help. Chronic homelessness experts say Worcester is a leader in helping the homeless. Worcester has done this before. They've ended chronic homelessness here before, I guess in 2011. Um, and so there's a, a track record to build on. And most communities have not really attained that goal before. So a lot of folks are you know, still trying to get to that for the first time. Chronic homelessness is defined as an individual who has been homeless for a year or more or has had at least four episodes of being homeless in the past three years. It's estimated dozens of people in Worcester County are chronically homeless. From 2007 to the present, we've we've gone from about 3,000 chronic homeless statewide to down closer to 1,200, and I think that's significant. Veterans Inc. has 91 beds and is roughly 90% full throughout the year. They'll come to us just for a short time, and then they're on their way, and sometimes they will come back. So they'll head out, and they'll come back, but we're here for them no matter what. Army veteran Victor Melendez stayed at Veterans Inc. for two years and now has an apartment of his own. He says it's all thanks to the support services in Worcester. He can say he is no longer homeless. I got a nice apartment. I'm so happy with it. And I'm happy with this place. I can't just forget about this place. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. Stopping in Worcester today, a mission to lay wreaths at graves of veterans buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Wreaths Across America helps to remember the lives of those who made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Our Rosalind Flaherty has the story. Wreaths Across America rolls into Worcester Tuesday as part of a week-long journey to Arlington National Cemetery. Coming down the roads and seeing the people out in weather like this, with those flags out and I, at other stops we said you can't buy an American flag in New England right now because they're all out here supporting us. Starting in Maine, the organization will place more than 200,000 wreaths on soldiers' graves at the cemetery. This is the first time they're passing through the city. The convoy of dozens of vehicles made a quick stop at Worcester State University. Carry out that mission so that people remember those who made the sacrifices and embrace their families during the holidays. Executive Director Karen Worcester and her family received the key to the city. Gold Star families are part of the convoy to Virginia. Dolly Sullivan is from central Massachusetts and has traveled with the organization for six years. Her son Christopher was killed while serving in Iraq in 2005 at the age of 29. Biggest fear a gold star parent has is that their child is going to be forgotten, that people won't honor their sacrifice. She says the journey helps her cope with the loss of her son. We have found on this journey and through Reeds Across America that they're not forgotten, that many people to be down in Arlington and see how many people show up, no matter what the weather, to help Lily Lives Reeds down is absolutely healing. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. On a cold day like today, a winter coat is a necessity to stay warm. And for some veterans, it's not always easy to get one. The Coats for Vets program, run by Project New Hope, distributes free winter coats to veterans. Tuesday, the organization handed out 100 donated coats, and President Bill Moore says they ran out quickly. This, this is really great. It's a great program. Uh, I'm a disabled Air Force veteran, and it, it's just good to, uh, you know, we don't call this a handout. We call it a hand up. And uh, to be uh, in partnership with a, a, a Ocean State job lot, a, a great business here to help out our, our men and women who served or are currently serving. Uh, you know, this is what Christmas is all about. There will be another Coats for Vets program Thursday in Holyoke. The program is first come, first serve. Congressman Jim McGovern taking to Twitter today, addressing the sexual misconduct allegations against President Donald Trump. McGovern's tweet reads, Today, more than 100 House Democrats demand House Oversight Committee to investigate President Trump's sexual misconduct allegations from at least 17 women. Proud to join Call for Truth. No president is above the law. He followed it up by responding to a post by the Washington Post. McGovern says President Trump calls accusers women who I don't know and or have never met. They include his business partner, contestant in one of his beauty pageants, reporter who interviewed him, and apprentice contestant. Retweet to say these women deserve to be heard. And dozens of female lawmakers on Capitol Hill also weighing in themselves. Blaine Alexander reports. Today, the calls for an okay. investigation growing louder. Mr. President, 
you do not live under a different set of rules. More than 100 Democrats saying it's time for Congress to look into sexual misconduct allegations against President Trump, who engaged in a bitter Twitter exchange with Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, one of at least six senators calling for his resignation. President Trump saying Gillibrand begged him for campaign contributions and, quote, would do anything for them, words taken by many as sexually suggestive. It was a sexist smear attempting to silence my voice, and I will not be silenced on this issue. Fellow Dr. Democrats Gillibrand rushing to her defense. Grotesque. It took my breath away, and it represents the conduct of a person who is ill-equipped to be the president of the United States. The White House firing back. He's not alleging anything. He's talking about the way that our system functions as it is, that politicians uh, repeatedly beg for money. The president today also labeling his past accusers women he doesn't know or never met. A former Miss USA contestant is defending the president. Just a very kind individual, um, very sincere, and there was absolutely nothing inappropriate at all. Now a growing number on Capitol Hill calling for an investigation to decide. Now, how likely is it that we will actually see an investigation? Not very. Remember that Congress is controlled by Republicans, so they're the ones who decide what rises to the level of an investigation and what does not. In Washington, Blaine Alexander, Worcester News Tonight.